Um, we also see that um, uh, there were some numbers in this data that looked a little fishy because some of the maximum loan amounts and maximum income amounts looked like they were bigger than um, you could expect to happen. But you, you see that after I screened out some of the really bad stuff, the, the largest loan is $45 million. You know, and I suppose if somebody's buying a mansion, that is believable. Um, this is just to show you that the, the money variables in the data ha are very, very heavy-tailed. And by the way, I cut, I cut, chopped off a little bit of the right-hand side of this distribution. So we've got some very heavy-tailed stuff. Uh, one of the variables we were very interested in was the ratio of the loan to income because we, we thought one of the things that happened when things really went crazy was that um, that ratio became much, much larger. Um, so one of the things you'll find, uh, and now at this point we were only able to download data from one uh, calendar period, which is 2007. We are working on getting data from earlier years so that we can produce a time series. But right now, the, we're just showing you some of the insights we were able to glean just from this one year. Okay, and one of the things that, that this shows is that um, the loan-to-income ratio uh, is much higher at the lower in, for the lower-income category. So you see that it goes, um, goes way up there for um, low-income categories. And to show you the, the relevance that had on the mortgage problem, we compare Florida, which is the top line, to South Dakota and Nebraska. And you can see that the state that had a problem, which is Florida, you know, has much, much higher on, uh, over the entire span of incomes on that ratio compared to two of the states that did not have a problem. And, and we fully believe that if we were able to do a time series of these, we'd see it going up over time and then coming down as uh, maybe towards the end of 07 and definitely going into 08 when they, they came to their senses. Okay, now because uh, there is a, a database um, that a lot of people um, pricing the mortgages both for um, uh, to assign a credit rating and for derivative pricing purposes and such. There is a database that a lot of people were using um, in their analyses, and I don't have access to that database. I, I did email them to say, you know, I'm doing some research. Could I use some of your data? And they came, emailed me back and said, uh, well, our starting price is $5,000, so I realize I wasn't going to use their data in my paper, but I am able, was able to get from the paper of another author, uh, two authors, and I can't pronounce their names, but you see it on the bottom of this slide. They published a paper that you could get on SS, the SSRN website. Um, and, and they actually did compute a time series of some descriptive statistics from a transaction level loan database. So this one is loan to value where you see that it was a little bit high in 01 and keep in mind that was the last time we had um, a recession problem in our economy. Goes down in 02 and then goes back up again over time as you get to 2006 then goes down again in 07. Okay, this is um, the volume of subprime loans with a, a line for the magnet, the size of the loans, and you can see that it increases dramatically. In fact, you know, it really explodes over time as you go from 2001 to 2005. It goes down a bit in 2006, but even as it's going down, the size of the loans continues to go up. So again, it's sort of one of the one of the findings that that we have always had in insurance when they look at insolvencies of insurance companies, rapid growth is you know a, a big a big factor in insolvencies and. 
Um, and, I, and I think in this subprime loan thing, it, it, um, rapid growth with, with absolutely underwriting standards just completely going away as you got to 05 and 06 were clearly a part of the problem. Okay, this, this graph shows um, the downward sloping line is the percentage of loans with complete documentation. And again, given everything we know about what was going on in the subprime market, um, that, you know, that the quality of the documentation really deteriorated over time is not surprising. The, uh, the line that um, as starts uh, exploding in 04 and 05, that's the proportion of subprime loans with balloon payments. So, um, and, and, and those are the ones that if, if you have a balloon payment that you have to pay off in only a few years, the only way you're going to be able to manage that loan is by refinancing it. And if something happens in the market and you can't refinance, then, you know, your uh, ability to manage that loan is probably just about non-existent, your uh, ability to keep on paying. So again, we can, these two lines are indicating the quality of the data and the application going down, the riskiness of the loan going way up. So um, now these two authors, uh, Demyanyuk and Hemmert, one of the things they claimed in their paper was um, the market should have known by at least 2005, just from simple descriptive statistics that they had available to them because, you know, if they, if they weren't looking at the data, they should have been. Um, this data was readily available and, even, you know, excuse me, five, you know, even if I consider $5,000 a lot for little old me, you know, a great big bank should have been able to purchase this data and start look at, looking at, you know, the quality of what they were writing. So the, the information was there, and you know some of my observations are that the you know the one, one calendar year of data indicates that lower income applicants tended to have um, a higher loan to income ratio, and again making those loans fairly risky. Also, a cross state comparison indicates that states with a foreclosure problem have consistently higher loan-to-income ratios compared to states not experiencing a foreclosure problem. And observations that uh, were taken from the paper where the authors were able to get loan, uh, transaction level loan information, subprime loans increased to unprecedented levels in 05 and 06. The loan-to-value ratio increased over time. The documentation decreased dramatically, and balloon payments increased, all of which should have indicated that there was a, a potential crisis out there. Okay, now uh, I'm going to be showing you data that we were able to get from an ISO subsidiary called Interthinks. This is a data that does capture um, loan level information and use it for um, analyzing for fraud. So this uh, graph just shows what um, their data was uh, indicating. Uh, you know, they construct an index of fraud, which I'll, I'll say something about it in the next slide. But their data is showing that the fraud index peaked around 04 and 05 in Florida, and then came down uh, some. Um, okay, just to say a few things about the fraud index, it's from Interthinks, which is an, uh, an ISO company, and my co-author works for ISO. This is how we were able to get some inf information from them. Now, I can't get my hands on that, their database, but we could, we could ask them to run some analyses for us. Um, uh, this index is currently dra in draft, not final form. It's calibrated so that 100 is a normal level meaning, you know, there's, at 100 is normal level of fraud. 